Hi there everyone, this is Mayur Gohil. This is my sixth video lecture on bilinear transformation and today here I am with a new concept of cross ratio. So let us see what is the definition of a cross ratio. So if W1, W2, W3, W4 are points in extended complex plane, then its cross ratio is denoted by this bracket W1, W2, W3, W4 and it is defined as W1 minus W2 divided by W2 minus W3 times W3 minus W4 divided by W4 minus W1. You can remember that this is like zigzag little bit over here, okay? So the numbers are carefully placed over here, okay? Now, uh, this is the cross ratio definition. This is how it is defined, okay? Now, related to this definition there is a theorem that is very important to us along with the bilinear transformation it goes in this way if z1 z2 z3 and z4 are points in z plane and their corresponding images in w plane are w1 w2 w4 under some bilinear transformation okay any arbitrary bilinear transformation then their cross ratios are equal that is that is the four points in Z plane and the four points in W plane have same cross ratio under the bilinear transformation. What does it mean to say is that the bilinear transformation preserves cross ratio. That is the hidden meaning in this theorem. Okay. Now related to this theorem and the definition above of the cross ratio that I have given here, there is an important a result I would like to mention. Suppose you are given three points of Z plane and three points of W plane and you are expected to find the associated bilinear transformation then how can you do using cross ratio property? It You can just use this result that is Z minus Z1 divided by Z1 minus Z2 times Z2 minus Z3 divided by Z3 minus Z is equals to W minus W1 divided by W1 minus W2 times W2 minus W3 divided by W3 minus W. Okay, it looks very big but it's very easy. Only thing is that you just have to see the definition of cross ratio carefully. It is that the W1, that is the suffix 1, is shifted to 2, 2 is shifted to 3, 3 is shifted to 4 and wherever you see w1 that has been replaced by the variable un, uh, a variable z okay so this z1 z2 z3 are the points that would be given to us in the question as well as w1 w2 and w3 would be given to us and we can then find the associated bilinear transformation this is very useful to us because we are going to see how to use this in solving problems related to bilinear transformation. You can jot down all of these three things that I have mentioned in this slide. Now I am going for solving the problem of a new type. Okay, So let us see how to solve the problem. This is type 2 questions. I have already covered type 1 questions in my previous video lecture. This is subtype A in type 2. So, find the bilinear transformation which maps the points z equals to 2, 1, 0 onto the points w equal to 1, 0, i. Okay, i is the imaginary number. Okay, so now how do we solve this? First of all, we will label the points that are given to us. That is z1 is equals to 2, z2 equal to 1, z3 equals to 0. Okay. And then W as W1 equal to 1, W2 equal to 0, W3 equal to I. Now one very important note over here I am mentioning here. That is do not change the order of the points given in the question. If you change the order of the points on either of Z or of W, your answer won't come correct. So for that reason, do not change the order at all. Okay. So, now how do we go about it? Since we know that the bilinear transformations preserves the cross ratio, what we will be doing 
is that we will use that third useful result that I had mentioned in my previous slide. So, as per this, now, as per that result, we get this, okay? Now, we have written Z1, Z2, Z3 and W1, W2, W3. We plug up these values into this formula over here and then we get this, okay? On solving this each of the brackets, what do I get is Z minus 2 upon minus Z is equals to I times W minus 1 upon W minus I, okay? And further, this is the expression that I will get, okay? Now further, what I am going to do is going to do componendo dividendo. On componendo dividendo, while doing that, I'm just going to recall it. This is how the expression will turn down both the ratios or you can say about the quantities will turn out into this manner. What happens actually in componendo dividendo, remember that the numerator is added with the denominator. Okay. And the denominator uh, and then at the denominator what do we do is numerator minus the denominator that is z minus 2 minus of minus iz is plus of iz and over here what do we do is the same thing w minus 1 on the over there in the numerator what I will do numerator plus the denominator so that's why I have added and over the denominator what I have done is numerator minus the denominator. So that's why I have done w minus 1 minus w plus i. Okay. Now on further solving, I solve this entire expression. Okay. Now what do I need is the bilinear transformation is of the form w equals to something. So in order to have all the terms away from w that is I want w alone on one side that's what I'm going to solve for so I'm shifting the denominator on the other side multiplying and performing all the algebraic calculations over here and then what do I get these expressions and all the things get cut down and at the end I get 2w is equals to 4iz minus 4i divided by z minus 2 plus iz okay and finally I get W is equals to this further what do I do is I collect at the denominator the Z terms so I get the expression as W is equals to 2iz minus 2i divided by 1 plus i times Z minus 2 okay and that is my required bilinear transformation. I am done with the solving of the problem. Only new thing in this problem was the componendo dividendo and the result that I had mentioned. You just have to be very careful while solving these problems because of the plus minus errors that you can create. Rest all is very easy. Okay. Now you can practice this question for yourself. Okay. So the problems. I am giving you only one problem right now. So if you have any difficulty, you can revert me back. You can comment in the section below and then I will help you out. Okay. So till my next video lecture, I will come out with type 2b problems and we will see how to solve them. Till then, tada.